Okay, so here's another random diff, uh, free response question. This one looks like it's a differential equation. So here we go. Uh, it's a, looks like a short one. There's two questions, A and B, about this differential equation. The first one's a tangent line. So let's get to that. So it says y equals f of x is the particular solution that passes through 1 comma 0, and it wants us to find the equation on the tangent line to f without knowing what f is. So just write down the equation of any tangent line or a tangent line to any graph f at 1 comma 0. It would be y minus f of 1 equals f prime of 1 times x minus 1. And now we just have to, oops, uh, fill in this f of 1 and f prime of 1. So f of 1 is right here. f of 1 equals 0. Done. f prime of 1 is the derivative at 1, and the derivative is right here, dy dx. Um, we have x's and y's in the derivative, so we're going to use both x equals 1 and y equals 0. So when we substitute 1 in for all the x's and 0 for the y's, we will get the derivative is e to the 0 times 3 times 0 minus, oh, I'm sorry, 3 times 1 minus 6 times 1 e to the 0 is 1, 3 minus 6 is negative 3, so 1 times a negative 3 is a negative 3, and there's the equation of the tangent line. So that was easy. Now we're going to use the tangent line to approximate f of 1.2, so f of 1.2 can be approximated by the tangent line's value there, which is negative 3 times 1.2 minus 1. And you're done with this question. You don't have to go any further. If you do, you will get negative 0.6, and we're done. So um, there could be a follow-up question on this, on whether the tangent line over or under approximates the actual value. And if it does ask, you want to find out if the graph is concave up or concave down in that interval, and that would be with the second derivative. But it doesn't ask, so we won't do worry about that. So the next question, B, is solving the differential equation. So these are very, very simple as far as the procedure. Uh, just be careful and don't make any uh, algebraic or computational mistakes. Easier said than done, right? So let's start. We're going to first separate the variables. So we're going to take this equation and we're going to put all the y's on the left. So dy over e to the y equals 3x squared minus 6 dx. Now, oops, 6x dx. Now, just be very careful here. Um, Double check your integrals after you do them. I don't like the e to the y on the bottom. I'm going to make this e to the negative y dy. And now I'm going to integrate both sides. So be very careful with these antiderivatives. The integral of e to the negative, x, negative y, you can let u be negative y and so on. Or the shortcut is just, you know, it's just e to the negative y times 1 over negative 1, or just negative e to the negative y. Uh, the right side is easy. Um, the power will also add 1 to the exponent, and 3 over 3 is 1. The second term, add 1 to the exponent, and 6 over 2 is 3. And I'm going to have my plus c right here. So I've successfully, hopefully, integrated. And now I'm going to use this initial condition to solve for this C right here. 
So you plug in 0 for y. That's e to the 0 then, so negative 1. And 1 for x. And then, again, carefully do this. Um, double check this answer as you're doing it because it's just... It's easy to get it wrong, but you shouldn't get it wrong. So uh, negative 1 minus 1 is a negative 2, plus 3 is 1, so I'm getting C equals 1. Again, at this point, I would double check just to make sure I, I did that right. So now I'm going to plug in 1 for C. And I've successfully have created a particular solution. Oops. The only thing is now I have to put it in terms y in terms of x. So y equals f of x. So I, I do have to solve for y. Um, don't go too crazy on this. Just use your algebra knowledge. Get rid of the negative first. So I change all the signs. Then you have to natural log both sides to get rid of this e. So when doing that, I'll get negative y equals the natural log of this. Now you don't need an absolute value. You used to put using absolute value signs with logs, but that's only comes from the integrals that become them. So you're good here. And now I have to just get, uh, get rid of that negative, so. And I've done it. Um, so I'll just quickly check here. This uh, one quick check of my math is make sure that the initial condition still applies. The initial condition was one comma zero meaning when I put one in for X, I should get zero for Y. So I do this mentally or because you don't want to confuse anybody with what your answer is. Um, if I put one in for X, I'll get negative one plus three, which is two minus one, which is one, uh, the natural log of one, which is zero. So I get, I do get what, y equals zero. So it's not a perfect check, but at least it checks for any really bad mistakes. And that's it. I'm done. See you next time.